All right, guys, good morning to all of those that are in the room. Uh, we have 77 in the room now and more people will be joining, I'm sure, as we continue. Thank you very much for joining us for this Anabasia Manzi and Kaila webinar this morning. Uh, we, your time is valuable and we really appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, without further ado, I'd just like to um, introduce us. We have Sean Davey, the owner of Anabasia Manzi and Kaila and his right-hand man, Solly Tavera, the COO of the brands. Um, we also have Rogan Bartman, who is uh, part of my company and basically will help us with the technical aspects of today's webinar. So let's get into how it's gonna work. Um, there's a and a tab, guys, if you can please focus on the Q&A tab for your questions. Sean and Solly will be chatting through their presentation. If you have a question, feel free to post it in the Q&A. Rogan at a relevant time will bring the question through to the gentleman and they'll do their best to accommodate the answer on that question at that time. Please stay away from using the chat for questions. We won't be monitoring the chat bar. Um, in addition to that, we are recording this webinar today. So if you have team members that have not been able to join us or you want to share it with other industry colleagues, please feel free to do so. We will be sending an email at the end of this or sometime today with all of the Anabezi, Amanzi and Kaila marketing collateral like images, videos, fact sheets, rate sheets, all that sort of stuff through to you guys, um, including a, a recording of this video session. So yeah, without, um, without wasting too much more time, Rogan, I don't know if there's anything that I've missed. I think that's it. No, you've yep. got everything that I can think of. Okay, great. We are going to basically, I'm going to hand over to Sean for a, for a short introduction and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Um, well, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of uh, this and thank you to Andrew and Rogan for organizing this uh, great initiative and these interesting times. I'm sitting here with Solly, who's our CEO, as uh, Andrew mentioned. He's the guy who runs the camps on the ground. He, uh, many of you who maybe have visited the camp Anabezi or Munzi in the last two years will recognize him. Um, and he has come on board in, as a more senior role um, this year, last year, this year, and, and going forward. So uh, he's an important part of the team and you'll be hearing from both of us uh, during the presentation. Um, I just, how I want to basically present uh, the, the products that we have, which are primarily focused in the Lower Zambezi, is to talk about the Lower Zambezi National Park and the Lower Zambezi Conservation Area. I truly believe that it is one of the most undersold national parks or wildlife areas uh, in, in Africa. And as a safari destination, it really has so much to offer. Um, without going into too much detail, we do have a, um, video which we'll play now which i kind of think breaks down the lower zambezi experience for you okay guys i'll just gonna quickly change the setting here and we will start the video
Sorry, I don't know what happened there. change one or two settings and then I'm going to give control over to Sean and he will take control now. Sean, it's ready for you. Okay, okay one second. Okay, I think we have done that. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and thanks, uh, Andrew. I think the, that video kind of encapsulates what the low Zambezi is. And every time I watch it, it uh, makes you wanna go back down there. Um, so I am gonna go through the presentation assuming that uh, sanity has prevailed in the world and people are traveling and airlines are flying and uh, things are back to some sort of uh, situation that we call normal. Um, so a lot of the flights I talk about um, will be on the assumption that we will have the kind of connectivity that we had uh, last year. Um, so just to give you some background and excuse the geography lesson, I'm sure you all know exactly where Zambia is, but it's a landlocked country um, located in the middle of Southern Africa, and it shares the Victoria Falls and the mighty Zambezi with uh, Zimbabwe. Sorry. Sorry, I seem to have lost everything here. Sorry. Uh, it says you're controlling the screen still. So you need to press your right arrow. The mouse doesn't work for clicking forward. Um, right arrow on your keyboard. Sorry, Andrew, that's my... It's one second, guys, I think. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, computer took over. Uh, so the... Lower... So just to talk about the connections into um, Zambia, we have many international flights, uh, Emirates, Ethiopian, uh, South African Airways, hopefully, or some version of it, all flying to uh, Lusaka, which is Zambia's uh, capital city. Um, and there are direct connections between Lusaka and uh, destinations such as Kigali and Rwanda, which is a good combination to combine with uh, the gorillas. And then also Dar es Salaam, uh, Tanzania for a beach option. Um, and other offerings into Namibia and obviously South Africa. Um, below there gives you an indication of what the uh, regional and international flights are. There are also flights into um, Livingston, uh, including a flight from Livingston to Cape Town, which again is um, key, uh, an important destination for, for Southern Africa. Um, so, up on your screen now is the ProFlight schedule, which um, looks, uh, which is the regional carrier. Um, it flies into Jeki and does Jeki to Mfui, uh, Jeki to Livingston, Mfui to Jeki, and then all the way around up to Calabo during the season for the Lua Plains National Park. Obviously, Mfui for South Luangwa, Solwezi um, up into the north, and then you can get to Durban and Joburg, which is a nice combination into the rest of uh, South Africa. So just to give you an idea of a route that might be um, kind of uh, something worth looking at, Royal Zambezi uh, or Royal Air Charters does a route from Lusaka, from Lusaka into uh, Royal and then from Royal into Livingston and then you can also connect from uh, there up into Mfui 
Um, this is important for our Kaila property, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, Royal is just 35 to 40 minutes by boat from Kaila. Um, if you're going to Jeki, if you're going to Anabezi or Man Am Amanzi, you would fly into, into Jeki. Um, so what we're looking at here is a, a indication of the times into Jeki airstrip. It's 40 minutes into Jeki and then 20 minutes from uh, Jeki into Ka the Kaila airstrip. This is important. I will talk a little bit about our uh, airplane. We have um, purchased an Islander, which is an eight seater plane. And we will be running uh, this route um, on demand uh, for all, as an option for all visitors going into the Lower Zambezi and using our properties, Anabezi and Kaila. Um, the Islander is, a, is something that's uh, been flown regularly in, in Zambia by ProFlight. Um, you may be familiar with it, but it's uh, built for short hops and uh, we're really excited to offer this option. It also means that should there be any uncertainty with um, any of the regional carriers or in Zambia, we can get anyone to into the Lower Zambezi and within the Lower Zambezi back to Lusaka. And, and I'll let Sully talk a little bit about our specials um, regarding uh, uh, our plane rebate or air ticket rebate uh, towards the end of the presentation. So I want to talk a little bit about um, how to sell the Lower Zambezi. Um, as I said, it's a really unique destination. Uh, and obviously I'm slightly biased, but, and I spent a lot, I've spent, I spend a lot of time down there, but the area just continues to grow and continues to amaze me. The game viewing consistently gets better year on year through, um, you know, the support of the Lower Zambi, the Conservation Lower Zambezi and um, our charitable organization, Zambezi Wildlife Trust. Um, it's a really unique uh, destination that I think will be, I hope will be front and center of, of uh, what you guys want to offer your guests in the future. So the big thing about the Lower Zambezi is it is actually far from the Madden crowd. It's a, a completely unknown um, uh, national park. It's got, you know, Mana Pools, which is a much better known cousin, um, but it does have that kind of overlooked uh, feel as, as a place where you can really go and enjoy, you know, probably real Africa in, you know, I hate using that term because I feel like it's overused, but it's, um, it really does have this feel of, of a wilderness that's accessible and yet, you know, still uh, under, visited, under visited. So it's got a, a great variety of options. And I think that's the big selling point, certainly when I speak to um, the uh, a, we'll speak to agents or sell Anabezi and uh, Amanzi Kaila. It really is the diversity of activities on offer. And again, we're not the the only people that offer these activities, and that's why I'm selling Lower Zambezi. Once I've sold you on that, I'll get you to come to our properties. So it's you know we've got morning and afternoon game drives, we've got night drives. There's boating and canoeing on the Zambezi River. There's fishing, tiger fishing, bream, um, walking safaris and birding. So I think the, the, the game viewing is, as I said, it just keeps growing um, year on year. And there's excellent game viewing on, on land and by water. And because we do have a permanent uh, water, uh, you know, there is permanent water, we do find that there is, um, you just get a unique perspective on how you view, how you have a safari. And anyone who's down, been down to the Lower Zambezi just loves the fact that you can have a safari and not have to get into a car. And quite often that's quite a unique selling point um, on people who are doing a circuit, maybe down to the South Luangwa. They, or, you know, they don't Kafui South Luangwa, they're invariably gonna spend, I don't know, six days, seven days in the vehicle. And here they are, have the opportunity to just to experience a, a safari from a completely unique perspective. And um, I think that's the biggest selling point that we need to kind of convey to you and that you possibly need to provide um, 
uh, to your clients. So the other thing is Zambia, um, it's an adopted country for both of us, we're both Zimbabwean, and it's a stable, peaceful, and incredibly friendly, friendly uh, country, which is actually easy to access. Um, and I think um, for both of us, that's an important part of what sells Zambia as a destination. Um, I mean, I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here, but in terms of uh, key destinations, Zambia's also got Victoria Falls and South Luangwa. Now, this is, uh, I mean, these are obvious uh, combinations with low, Zambi low Zambezi and well-known destinations, but um, there are a number of other destinations that can be included to, I, I was recently up in Lua Plains about two months ago, and it really is a great um, destination for a safari and something completely different if you want to sell that. Again, there's also at this time of the year going up to see Kasanka and the bat migration. Um, there's just, Zambia is so diverse as a place that it's, it would be unfair just to uh, kind of pigeonhole it into something that, you know, you can add Victoria Falls and South Luangwa onto. That said, they are also fantastic must-see safari destinations. Um, so how the Lower Zambezi combines with other destinations. Um, so lots of uh, operators are selling Botswana in combination with um, uh, South Africa or Zimbabwe. Um, there, I really like the idea of Zambia being a, uh, a place that people can go on safari after seeing the gorillas. I think um, it provides a really um, unique safari experience combined with something that is incredibly unique in Rwanda being the gorillas. Um, and uh, it's, well, it's unique from South Africa as well. So I think there are a lot of additions. There's, it's a completely different um, product. I keep saying that. <laughs> um, the, so the Lower Zambezi offers a one-stop shop for both water and land-based game activities um, in an uncrowded area. I think also it's a little bit of a, a one-stop shop in terms of what you can provide to, to your uh, clients. And, um, you know, you've got the unique Kulefu, like the Winterthorn forests that give it a really great Jurassic, like Jurassic Park-like feel. Um, I just think it looks prehistoric when you see the elephants moving under the, the, these winter thorn forests. It's permanently green because of the proximity to water and these winter thorns. Um, and uh, it's got what is low, arguably made the Lower Zambezi relatively famous, and that's the canoeing. I mean, obviously, that was born on, on, on the Zim side with mana pools, and Solly worked in Rakomichi for a long time. and um, it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea, um, but for me, it's the most unique thing you can do on, on Safari and a must do. And we have some great channels and uh, we've, there's some great people, have, people rave about it as one of the great experiences that they've had on Safari. Um, so likewise, the boat, boating and fishing, I mean, it's uh, one of these things we've seen increasingly that even most of the guests don't necessarily come there to fish, but almost every single guest wants to have a go at fishing and, you know, catching a tiger fish is such an adrenaline rush and, you know, you can only catch them in very few places. They're a great fighting fish. They're an easy catch in, in actual fact. So it's a bit of a low-hanging fruit for to make someone's day on safari. Um, so, you know, other than uh, the fishing, you can do the fishing while in, enjoying safari, like a safari experience on the boats. Um, we also have the option of the night drives, the day drives. Um, again, not always allowed in all the other national or other national parks, but in the, the Lower Zam, um, we, we do have um, 
more relaxed regulations and um, we're allowed out until eight. So you do get great night drives. Um, recently, you've seen a fair amount of kills um, at night and you also get a unique amount of uh, individual uh, sightings that you, would might, you might not get during the day. Um, so the game numbers in the low Zambezi, as I said, we're, we're really proud of, of what we've done down there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our lion population because um, uh, when we arrived at Anabezi, um, we hadn't even built a Munzi. Anabezi was, we are building Anabezi. There was um, three males and one female called Gubu um, and very distinct. She had a, a, a growth on her on a on the side um, of his stomach, um, so very recognizable, and um, we thought that she was barren because for two or three years nothing happened, and um, we've now Gua had three um, cubs, um, two of which survived, and she protected them fearlessly, and those two cubs have had cubs, and she had another set of cubs, so from one single um, resident female that made its made her home at Anabezi. We now have a pride of 12 lions um, and well, lionesses with the three males that call their, that call Anabezi and Manzi or the Kulefu area their home. Um, it's, it's, I think, a testament to what tourism can do. The fact that the presence there protected those uh, animals to the point that allowed them to, to basically grow in numbers. Wild dog um, getting more and more prevalent. We're seeing more sightings, particularly at this time of the year, as they push a bit closer to the um, river. You do see them a lot more. Um, and I mean, it's just a wonderful animal to see. Tremendous birding uh, in, in the lower Zam. You get your uh, bee eaters, your uh, rollers, the unique. Um, you know, a whole array of unique species. It's home to 500 species, um, you know, from the lilac breasted, breasted roller, pearls fishing owl, the ground horn bull. Um, and I think uh, as a birding destination, it is also something we get birders that come back every year consistently, um, just because of the variety uh, of, of birds you get down there and the, the, how regularly you see these rare species. I'm just going to give you a brief history of the um, uh, Lower Zambezi National Park. Um, I think it's important to kind of talk through um, how we got there because it's, it's, it's relatively unique. Um, so it was a, the Lower Zambezi was actually created under a US AID program in 1973. Um, where Wildlife Conservation International, so I'll go back, um, came to the Lower Zambezi and set up an uh, a international park. It was then declared a national park in 1983. And then the Cummings family um, decided to explore the area and they set up a camp in 1989. And many of you will know um, Grant Cummings. Uh, he's the owner of um, Old, M Old Mandoro and Chiawa. And Old Mandoro is our closest neighbor. Um, so in the 1990s, Anatri was set up. Um, uh, Anatri Lodge was set up uh, in 1997 and offered a very rustic but authentic bush experience. And it was popular for its remote location. In 2010, um, my, I got involved with, with my family and we uh, set up uh, and started to build basically Anabezi and uh, we wanted to build a really uh, classic, luxurious product in the remote location uh, of the Anatry, uh, of, of, of Anatry Lodge. Um, so we opened Anabezi in 2013, and then our sister camp, Amanzi, which is just about three kilometers downstream in 2015. Um, so the obviously an important part of what we do now, and I've spoken about the difference that tourism makes. I mean, Anabezi uh, uh, funded the building of the Kalefu uh, Scout Base at the Kalefu Airstrip. Uh, that allowed a 
uh, platform or a routing point to provide the DPNW scouts an opportunity to uh, patrol and protect that side of the park. I genuinely believe that that has allowed, um, has resulted in a huge decrease in snaring because that eastern side of the park was almost completely unprotected um, for a long time and uh, has also resulted in things like, you know, the, the lion population to grow, to bounce back. Um, you're getting, you know, you're getting a lot more zebra. I mean, the, the game numbers in absolute terms have just really gone up in that, in that area. Uh, but it's not just about the animals. And um, in uh, 2017, we established the Zambezi Wildlife Trust. Uh, it's an organization dedicated to ensuring that the communities within the Lower Zambezi Conservation Area benefit from wildlife life conservation, um, including the wildlife tourism se sector. So our, our vision is to create a long-term sustainable environment where wildlife and people can coexist. And our main focus isn't actually the national park. We believe that um, the national park is, is well protected by the good work of DPNW and CLZ. We shifted our focus very much to the Chiawa GMA that coincided with um, our involvement or building of Kaila, um, which is in the Chiawa GMA. And um, the idea is to not only provide a a, a mechanism to protect the environment um, and the wildlife, but also to invest in communities and see that, and let the community see that protecting the environment um, result, it does have up, upsides that fall outside the usual um, kind of employment creation. So the Zambezi Wildlife uh, Trust uh, concentrates on basically five uh, very simple uh, uh, um, objectives, uh, defining land use with, for both conservation and community development. What we're finding is that, um, you know, the Chiao GMA is relatively unique in that it does have a large population or relatively large population, particularly in the West. And um, as the animal population has increased, it has resulted in more um, uh, animal, hum human animal conflict. We, were, we have uh, invested in the idea of creating areas that are protected um, for the communities to do some growing, some agriculture, uh, and, in, uh, and in, in return for that, clearly defined, defined conservation areas. Um, and the other thing we do is we have an anti-poaching unit, which is um, uh, six scouts, and uh, they operate in the Chiawa GMA. Uh, that's led to a almost 95% reduction in the number of uh, snare, snares in the area. Um, as we, our operations become more and more uh, solid, we're pushing more and more west into west of the GMA. Um, deforestation, uh, obviously with that idea of having these very, very clear uh, areas for conservation, we've come to agreements with the community not to, to do charcoaling, or burning in these uh, uh, areas within GMA. Crop raiding, I mean, this is a crit critical issue, which uh, we are, have a community liaison officer, which uh, basically allows uh, uh, the communities to call on him in the event of a crop raiding situation. And we work with DPNW to ensure that there isn't a tragic outcome to that. Um, and then our community improvement projects. Um, so we've, uh, to name a few, we've um, built a uh, teacher, a uh, accommodation for the head teacher at Mbulumenu School. Um, we have uh, in, put in a, a solar pump to allow people to uh, pump river water from the river to away from the river banks where the uh, where a lot of the, the community was washing, it results in erosion, it results in, 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 in uh, issues of crocodile and hippo attacks. And um, they actually prefer the water out of the river um, uh, rather than the boreholes in terms of for drinking. Uh, and our main focus has really been to ask the com community what they need and then try and see if we can fulfill it. So that's how we got to building a teacher's house for uh, the local school. 
Um, we've also uh, assisted the DPNW. We bought a new um, vehicle, uh, a Land Rover, because uh, the warden, the head warden, was using his own vehicle. So we bought a, a Land Rover, which has been in use for the last three years. And um, the department has just received this year two more Land Cruisers. But in the, those intervening years, the vehicle donated by the Zambezi Wildlife Trust was the only vehicle used to deploy scouts in the entire Lower Zambezi National Park. Um, CLZ obviously had its role with, a, with their own uh, vehicles deploying their, their scouts. Um, but we're very proud of the work we've done. We think it's effective and uh, we think it's important. And with our involvement in, the, in Kaila, we are hoping to uh, expand uh, and you know, basically make sure we spend uh, you know, the money where it's most effective. Um, so I think, um, Rogan, are there any questions Sean. I can take at this time? Sean, I just want to come in here for a second and maybe, I don't know if there's a map um, following any of these slides, but I think it's important to explain to everyone the difference between the National Park and the GMA and how it works because um, you're talking about the GMA and maybe I missed it when I was running out to cross the guy and get grass outside our window, but um, what is the difference between the National Park and the GMA? I mean, uh, in terms of, of conservation and how it works very briefly. Yeah, so um, I've just brought, brought, up, brought up this uh, slide. So I, I hope everyone can see, see it. It's a map of the Lower Zambezi National Park. Um, you can see on the west there, Anabezi and Amanzi, yeah. right in the west. Um, so the Lower Zambezi National Park is approximately 4,300 square kilometers. Um, that is a massive area. And in actual fact, most of the tourism happens in a tiny area, about less than 10% of that. Um, so its boundaries are constantly infringed upon. So the a national, a, a game management area, which um, you know, is you have Rufunsa game management area in the north and, and, and the east, and Chiawa game management area in the west. Um, game management areas are the consumptive use areas, and they've kind of morphed. The idea is that they're a buffer between the national park and the wider world as you protect the animals, and that they go into that from the national park and they go into the GMA. Um, the, this relationship has become increasingly more com complicated as you get uh, a growth in the population. So what happens is as you do a good job in the Lower Zambezi National Park or in these national parks or these protected areas, the animals do venture out in search of territory and you do have um, more game numbers in the Chiawa GMA, in the, in the GMAs. So the GMAs are, aren't, are not as regulated as the Lower Zambezi National, uh, as the national parks. Um, and so as a result, you have probably slightly more uh, tourism offerings um, and more people. So it's, but what's important is that if you don't provide some protection in these, the, these GMAs, the national park border becomes a hard boundary between conservation and humanity. And I think that makes the job of protecting these areas more and more difficult. So our view was obviously we have a vested interest in, in ensuring that the Lowe's and that the Chiawa GMA is protected, but it also uh, speaks to a wider um, vision for the Lowe's and Beasy National Park and our contribution as, as uh, responsible tour operators. So, I mean, I've answered the question there, Andrew. Is there anything else you want to? Yeah, answer? sure. I think, I think an analogy to a neighboring country and the one that I'm sitting in right now, South Africa, is there's no buffer zone between the national park or, or game reserve or preserve and the community. Hence, our fence lines in South Africa, where, you know, you literally have on one side of the fence a national park and its wild vegetation and animals, and on the other side, side of the fence more and more um, as, as populations expand and more and more of these reserves, you have communities being built um, and houses literally up against the fence line. In Zambia, you know, there was a lot of forward thinking years and years ago where they, they had these buffer zones um, and game management areas. So there's no hard fences. I mean, if you're driving from the GMA into the national park, it's literally a boom gate across the
able to move freely. And I think it's a little bit more, you know, like the Kenyan model. Um, and for me, that just is a lot more romantic than, um, than a hard fence, to be fair. So I just wanted yeah, to explain that because there is still game and there's still an experience in the GMA. That's what I was, I was trying to get at. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, again, it, it goes, uh, it also comes back to why the human animal conflict is such an important part because you actually can become a, a victim of your own conservation success, um, whereby the animal numbers go up and then the people in the area start resenting the fact that, you know, their needs aren't being uh, looked after because more animals needs more crop breeding, more human animal interaction and more tragic events. So it's something that really does need to be managed. And uh, there at Kaila, we are, you know, at the coalface. Um, and so our hands been forced in, 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 in some ways. And it's, it's, we, we've, I think we've risen to the occasion. And I think from a wider, just speaking to a wider point of what tourism is meant to be, it's meant to be a uh, tool an enabler for conservation, in my opinion. Um, that's why, that, that's a sacrifice that we, we make, that we, we, we create jobs, we protect, uh, we, and we invite people to enjoy it, but in exchange, we contribute to the protection of this area. And so it just speaks to a lot of things that uh, we both hold dear in terms of the conservation um, model that uh, we've grown up with. Thanks, Sean. Earlier, Sean, you were just asking about any questions. There's none that have come through yet, but as they do come in, I will let you know. Okay. Um, just going to go back just two slides. Um, uh, so, okay, so I'm... Um, We've spoken a bit about the 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 low Zambezi um, and the Zambezi Valley. That's a picture of Kaila, um, and I'll talk about Kaila uh, a bit later on. Um, I think it's throwing me more off my my rhythm, Andrew. Um, Sorry, Sean. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, so uh, just going back there. Um, I, that you know, I, I actually spoke a bit about Guvu um, uh, a, a bit early, but those those are five of the cubs. The sixth one at the back. Um, those cubs um, are now uh, so there's there's four or five remaining. They sub adults, um, and you know they'll be the next this, uh, um, uh, the next generation um, to populate the the that that area, and they'll move out and. You know, we'll just get a really healthy lion population. Um, the, it, it just it fills me with immense pride um, that we've, no pun intended, that we've managed to do that. Um, the, the, the leopard population in, in the lower Zam is, um, is phenomenal. I mean, I feel like Zambia uh, with South Luangwa and the lower Zambezi has a lot to offer in terms of leopard sightings. We have had <clears throat> guests who've gone out and in a single afternoon game drive have seen five different leopard sightings. Um, and that's just becoming more and more common as, you know, as, as these animals become more and more habituated. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I think that's what we can really, like it's a great destination to sell um, uh, seeing a leopard. While I don't like to use the term guarantee, it's certainly very likely. I think, I think in camp we worry a lot more of lepers than elephants. Yeah. You yeah. just, just walk around the corner and there's a leopard. Um, so the, the other thing I just want to chat to um, with regards to the lowest Zambezi is we, it is, a, and in, in comparison to mana pools, it is, a, I believe, a slightly more aesthetically beautiful park. Um, it's got, you know, a real, you know, that, those Kalefu, those, those, the, the Winterthorn forests are just, out of this world, it's, it is less busy and it has almost no self drives. Um, so I think just that in itself and down where we are, if I may um, uh, uh, push Hanabezi and Amanzi, we are right in the east, there's nothing else down there. And that in itself uh, is, uh, is unique. So just some elephant numbers. Um, so the number of elephants is about 2,500. That was the 2013 census. I believe there's a 
the 2018 census is about to be finalized. Um, lions are about 60 to 100 uh, individuals. There's not much known uh, to the east of us. Um, there is definitely a Muslim Sensi pride. Um, we've seen them. I actually saw them last time I was down in, in the Manzi two weeks ago. Um, lots of leopards, wild dogs. We have two really large packs. Um, one sits right behind um, uh, Anabezi uh, up in the hills there. Um, uh, over 400 bird species and then healthy populations of buffalo, hippo, waterbuck, zebra, eland, roan, reedbuck, and parla and warthog. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our guiding um, uh, and, you know, Solly's uh, ex-guide uh, worked with wilderness. Um, he is kind of ensured that the guiding level has been maintained at a very high uh, level. And we, we not only expect our guides to be professional, but we insist that they're, they're just good people. Um, they're fun to be around. They always um, have a lot to say and they talk, uh, you know, you're able to talk to them across a load of different subjects. And I, I think that's important. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to go into Anabezi, Amanzi and, and, and Kaila. I'll, st I'll start with Anabezi. Um, Sean, can I just uh, get a gap there quick? I've got some yeah, questions sure. coming through now. Sure. So one of the questions coming in is just somebody asking, in your opinion, what is the best combination of reserves in Zambia? Okay. Um, well, Sully, you can come. You've, prob you've, you've worked in all of them. <laughs> so, um, but I would say, I mean, I like the idea of doing a, um, a Victoria Falls, a Lower Zambezi, and a South Luangwa. Um, I do actually think the best route is probably the re uh, probably the reverse of that. So start in the South Luangwa, mm -hmm. do the Victoria, uh, do the Low Zambezi, finish off with the Victoria Falls, and then maybe catch a, a flight, a sorry, catch a um, plane down to Cape Town and do Cape Town. I mean, I'm, I uh, I think that's a good combination. The uh, during lockdown, I, as as I said, I went to Lua, I visited Kafui, and you just realize that Zambia has so much to offer. I mean, you, Sully, what do you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's exactly it. I, I, I definitely agree with you, Sean. I mean, you couldn't do it better than that. Mm. Start from uh, South Luangwa, Lower Zambezi, and finish up on the, um, in, in Livingston. Mm. Um, but I mean, obviously, you know, like um, Kafui National Park, mm. you know, it's, it's it's different. I mean, it's completely different. It's obviously I wouldn't send it. I wouldn't send people that have never actually been in a safari down there. Mm. You know, I mean, it's really good for people that have been in a safari to go down there. But yeah. I think you know yeah. that, that combination. I think you know the Kafui. You get up to the Basanga. I think it's amazing, yeah. um, and you've got quite a small window to get up there. Mm. But that South Luangwa Low Zambezi. Uh, We lost Sean there. Are you back? Hello? Uh, I thought it was me for a Malawi. Sorry, Sean, we lost you there for a sec. You're back. Okay, sorry. Um, you can do the uh, combination up, uh, the reverse combination, start with uh, um, Livingston and head up to um, uh, Low Zambezi, South Luangwa. And then I like the idea of doing your kind of beach holiday in Malawi. I know like the likes of Robin Pope and them have been pushing it for a long time, but you now having been to Malawi, I, I just think it's, it's got a great feel. It's, it's unique and it probably fits into the profile of, of uh, the type of person who comes to Zambia. Well, while you were busy with that, I see somebody has come through and just said, do you mind just putting, getting the map on the, on the screen so that they can just see how it goes and how it flows? Yeah, sure. Hold on. I'm going to actually escape for a moment because otherwise... Um, It'll take a while to get to. Yeah. Sorry, I've got quite a few questions, guys, that have come through now, so... Yeah, well, I'm glad. Is that a good one? Yeah, I think that's a good one. Um, I just wanted to also come in here and say, you know, regarding the packaging 
very briefly, um, packaging of, of Zambia. Um, you know, one of the things we've been, we've been representing products in Zambia since 2010-ish. Um, you know, our, our relationship with Anabezia, Manzi and Kail is a year old. But um, we were very, very, very pleased to, have, you know, at one point, everything kind of went by Lusaka. And um, as the tourism you know, industry has grown and, and opened up, there are links between Livingston directly, the Lower Zambezi, connecting Mfue um, and, yes, Lusaka to get in and out internationally or Livingston. So I, I just want to quickly endorse what Sean and Sully have said. I, I would 100% advocate for starting in the South and we're going through to the Lower Zambezi and ending in Livingston. And the fact that it's now connectable directly is a massive thing. And we used to, you know, people used to say, why don't you sell Zambia to the trade? And they say, oh, you know, so the flight logistics, the flights are expensive. Guys, they're no more expensive than, than Botswana's, you know, kind of camp to camp hops um, really these days. And, you know, there's no longer an excuse of, oh, but the logistics, you know, it it's, means extra legs and going via Lusaka. That's, you know, God willing, uh, we come out of this COVID thing, uh, you know, and, and all of this is, is up and running again. You know, you can connect these areas directly now. Um, so there's really no excuse. And I just wanted to look quickly before we go back to Sean and Sally on, on the maps and, and everything else. You know, everyone else used to say, but, you know, is the Lower Zambezi sellable, you know, as a, as a standalone? And that 100% is, you know, it's it's Chobe on steroids. Um, when I say on steroids, steroids from a wild perspective, steroids from a, a game perspective, steroids from a perspective that you're not sharing it with 5,000 other tourists. So, you know, and, and it's, in my opinion, just that low Zambezi and the fact that the Zambezi is a lot wider and there's sandbanks and you've got a, it's a world heritage, proclaimed world heritage site, minor pools on the, on the Zimbabwean bank, which is a massive area. Um, it's probably the closest thing to heaven on earth that we can find. So is it sellable as a standalone three, four, five night destination as a Livingston add-on? 100%. But yes, you know, let's sell Zambia and, and the South Luang has a lot to offer you as well um, in terms of big game viewing. But um, I was a guide in the Sabi Sands for four years from 99 to 2003. And, you know, the leopard viewing in the Lower Zambezi, guys, is if not better than the Sabi Sands. I mean, it's, they are relaxed. Everything, everything is relaxed. The game viewing is exceptional. And you've still got a million quilias coming to drink water off the river and African skimmers and all sorts of stuff and that peaceful, soulful river experience in the game viewing from the river, which a lot of other places don't offer. So... I'm a massive advocate for this this park in general, but Zambia has got so much to offer. Sorry for for taking up some of your time there, Sean. Uh, no problem. I think we're actually having a a few um, internet issues, so it was probably good timing. Um, okay. So, are there any other questions, or should I? Yep. There's there's actually quite a few. So I have uh, Kate coming through. She's asking, "Do we have the big five there? Do you have the big five? Okay, I've actually pulled up her question. So, um, uh, Kate, do you have the big five? We have the big four. So, there are no rhinos. Um, funnily enough, uh, yesterday there was a big call with the low, uh, LZTA, the Low MBZ Tourism, Tourism uh, Association, TFF, and the funders, and a, a, I can't remember which organization. Um, to talk about bringing in a rhino into the Low Zambezi, which would be a great um, reintroduction after you know 30 years of, of being absent. So the big four, no rhino. Um, that said, you can see rhino in uh, Livingston, in Livingston yeah. and in North Luangwa. Um, our main market, what main market do you receive? I would say at the moment, we are very popular with the American market. And we are, um, uh, the UK market is also a big one for us. Also, um, I guess Australia yeah. come, you know, uh, quite big co um, considering. And um, uh, Europe is less, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know if we're less popular with it. I, and I don't know if it's a price thing, but we, we get a, a limited amount. If, if so, it's primarily from Germany, mm -hmm. uh, would you say? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, the best season to travel, well, our season is from April to um, no, November. And we, I would say anytime then, I would discourage, not discourage, but I would warn, you know, as we get towards September, August, September, the game viewing gets exceptional. So that's just a function of the animals moving down to the river. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but 
after October and November are hot. Yeah. And there's not, it, it's, it's a very hot place. You know, you can get every day is kind of 35 and it gets up to 40. But so anytime from April to September, the weather is guaranteed to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it also allows you to have the best options for South Luangwa mm -hmm. and the Kafui, mm -hmm. should you want it. Um, uh, the best countries to combine with. Um, listen, I think we, we are quite fortunate um, that to, to have Botswana at our doorstep. I think um, Zambia offers a, uh, a more, well, a cheaper version of Botswana or certainly a, um, it, it's what Botswana was maybe 20 years ago. Me and Andrew talk about this a lot. Um, so I, I think combining it with Zimbabwe or Botswana and Malawi. And, and Malawi. I mean, uh, again, I, I'm having done some trips up to Malawi. I'm just a big fan of that type of, of holiday. Um, uh, I think it's really unique. Um, and South Africa also. Yeah, yeah and, South, and, and obviously South Africa. I mean, I think for, for a lot of people that Livingston Cape Town flight it was being done both by Kenya Airways and South African Exp Express. Um, is is a great one to do, and I think we, um, uh, you know, Cape Town will always be there, and will be always be on the bucket list along with the Victoria Falls. So if you can add some stuff yeah. onto that, I think you're ticking a lot of boxes, which is as as agents is is or is what you want is actually what you want to do. Um, okay, uh, we we've got still quite a bit to get through, so um, just yeah, uh, is there any more questions there, or that we've been answered, Rogan? Uh, yeah, we've pretty much got it there with uh, Kate's one done. Um, also just wanting to refresh on the routes. I see a few operators like that and they're wanting to just see if we can send the maps, please, uh, afterwards for these routings. I think it's very, very handy. Um, in the meantime, I think let's carry on and then at the end, take a look at questions again, hey, Sean, or it's going to take a while. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll go through um, the product uh, relatively uh, quickly. So I'm just out. Uh, let me just see if I need to uh, react again, Sean, I think. Again, Sean, I think Sorry. Okay, I'm going to give you remote control again. Thanks. Right, you can take control. Go for it. Just give me a second. Um, so I'll go through our three products. So um, we we have Anabezi, Amanzi, and Kaila. Um, as I said, Anabezi was opened in 2013 um, and Amanzi in 2017. I saw a question, which um, would you combine with Kaila? I think either of those uh, of, of our properties down there uh, is a great com combination. We prefer to combine it with Anabezi. Um, and that's mainly just because of the feel of the camps. We think they probably have a similar feel. Um, but we'll, uh, and our Zambezi experience is also with um, Amanzi, uh, Anabezi in, in mind, Anabezi and Kayla. So that's um, there. And then so I'm just trying to get to this a bit, bit slow. Here we are. Okay, so um, do you want me to take control and get you there, Sean? Yeah, I'm trying to, it's not really moving. If you can get okay. me to the beginning of Anabezi and then I'll just talk through and you can oh. I'll go next slide. Sorry about that, this guys.
Right, here we go. Okay, so let's, uh, we've talked about the map and we, do you want to start on the map? Should I give um, you control again or do you want me to, yeah. want me to pilot? Pilot, you pilot, you go through it. Um, okay. So um, as you can see, this is the map. Um, just to give you an idea, the Kalefu airstrip is um, just 15 minutes away. Jackie is about 40 minutes away. Um, so pro flight and, and most of the seat carriers flying to Jackie. Um, and Kaila and Kalefu will be serviced by our Islander um, uh, on kind of on demand. Um, and it's just 15 minutes away from uh, both camps, a little bit closer to Amanzi. Kaila is about 10 minutes away from Kaila Airstrip. If we go to the next one. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Anabezi. I think um, the camp itself, uh, it's, you know, slightly set back. It's got a great feeling. You have the Zambezi deck, which sits there. We've got five tents um, uh, on to the west, uh, sorry, uh, to the west, and then uh, tent six to 12, number 12 being a family unit. So what's unique about Anabezi uh, is we have two common areas or two decks. This allows us to basically uh, provide the guests with um, quite a different fee feeling um, each time they want to experience, um, you know, just enjoying uh, the bush. So both decks have Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi they both have pools, they both have drinks. Um, that's the Zambezi deck. Um, it's got a fire pit. Um, this is where we hold, this is the heart of Anabezi. Um, it's, uh, you know, fully decked, it's raised up. Um, you have your breakfast sitting out over um, looking onto the uh, Zambezi River. Slightly, the slight elevation and uh, being set slightly back means we have great game viewing in the national, um, in the, uh, from the decks. It's all on this raised walkway. Um, that's important because it provides a degree of safety. It allows the guests to walk to and from the uh, tents at their leisure. That's the Mushika deck. And that is um, with a watering hole, you can just see in the, in the front there. And it has, it looks over the Mushika floodplain. So again, a very different feel um, and just provides a, a, a bit of variety for the, for the uh, guests. So that's and the, one of the, the suites, the tents at Anabezi. We have 11 tents that are exactly the same in one family unit. They all have their own private plunge pools um, uh, and they're very generously spaced. Some of them are uh, have a king size deluxe as this one's shown, some two double beds, all under a four poster mosquito net, indoor uh, bathroom with a standalone Victorian bath, uh, wash basin toilet and an outdoor shower, your own sitting area, coffee station, um, uh, writing area, it just really has a feeling of, 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 of luxury and having your own space. So Munzi is our smaller offering. It's just three kilometers downstream, um, much smaller. It's got the two standalone tents and the family suite um, with the main area and the pool. And uh, it's a really nice little camp. Um, a Munzi means water and it sits right on the water looking out over what we call the Nguenya channel. That's the main deck there with just to your left, your screen, the pool. Um, it's a, a very similar offering in terms of the game viewing experience due to its close proximity. It's just a, probably a little more um, rustic, a little more intimate, and it's fantastic for private camp hire. Um, very popular because it really feels like your own little slice of, of paradise. I love the pool at uh, Anabezi. It's a great way to spend the day um, right on the banks of the Zambezi as we um, uh, watching it flow past. Um, the Nguenya uh, Island just across there uh, is full of games. So you wake up looking out over uh, the Sanguinia channel onto the island. Again, a similar um, configuration. We have two with uh, two double beds and two tents with king size deluxe. Um, so, and again, you both camps uh, offer the same uh, activities in terms of the variety. We also do special things like, you know, these beach lunch outs, which are 
on a sandbank in the middle of, of the lower Zam, uh, the Zambezi River. Um, it's just, I, I mean, it's just such a, a great experience. Um, so we were at Anabezi. We're now going to go um, up to uh, Kaila. And as you can see, Kaila is on a, it's within the GMA, but it's what's unique about Kaila is it's on a private game reserve. So it's 8,300 acres of um, private land within the GMA and um, with an airstrip right there. Um, the only other property on the project, uh, on the prop, the only other uh, property on the, uh, in the reserve is Matondo House, which is a private family house uh, where I, um, that belongs to um, my family. And then, um, so Kaila is just next door and it's probably a little more lodgy in the typical South African sense of the word. It's got four chalets um, and a main block with a pool. Um, and it's very kind of well um, positioned. Kaila is also quite unique because if you've ever been to the Lower Zambezi, it's the area where the Zambezi escarpment is closest to the river. So you get these great like kind of backdrops of, of the escarpments in the background with Kaila Mountain um, uh, sitting there. So um, it's, it, we do some, some unique uh, drives and uh, camp outs at the top there at a place called the Ruins. Um, and it just gives great perspectives and views of, of the Zambezi River. It's the main area with the pool. Um, you could probably cycle through just to give a feeling. Again, like simple, um, you know, well finished. Uh, it's, as I said, probably got a bit more of a lodgy feel um, and also quite elevated. So you get great views out onto the lower Zambezi. We're right opposite Mana Pools downstream from Mokomachi. So um, you look out over onto Mana Pools National Park. Um, and uh, yeah, again, only in these four chalets, you only get the two double beds um, and, you know, pool, standalone bath. Um, sitting area, outdoor um, veranda or balcony, and most of and most of our activities are within the private conservancy. But yes, we can sometimes go out. Yeah, and what's quite nice yeah. with uh, the activity, uh, what the activities that we offer is, we also offer um, a visit to the Ngulumenu village to go and see some of the the projects that we do. We are uh, offering a, a, a an opportunity. To go and uh, have lunch out there which is a traditional lunch um so the the, the offering while similar is slightly different the, the landscape is much more south luangari rather than there that's that's what we call the ruins um and it looks out over onto the the, the so you drive up there we also do walks up there and uh, you can do a camp out up there um and you've got uh, you know great views and uh, that's also uh, something that isn't uh, you can't do it in too many other places. Some of our uh, visits to the village, um, Ngulumenu um, is a place that we go in the, the small villages around there. So I'm now gonna hand over to Soli um, just to talk a little bit about our rates and specials. Is this what we agreed? Yep. Okay. <laughs> You're it. Hello everyone. Sorry, I've hidden the wrong slide. So you're going to have to use your old slide. I've hidden the wrong slide, mate. Sorry. Sure, so sure. The one that All right. That's still the wrong slide, Andrew. Yeah. Let me let me get out of it quickly and get back in. I just want to yeah. unhide the right slide. Are we in the right presentation here? Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. We're going to start with your rates. That was where we were going to start. There we go. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. It's really great. So I'm just going to walk uh, you guys through our rates uh, for Anabezi, Kaila, and Amanzi. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with Anabezi. Uh, please take note that these are our rack rates and uh, excluding the uh, park fees. Okay. Um, so Anabezi rack rights, these are 2021 and they're all in US dollars. Pay person sharing and number of chains uh, for Anabezi 12. Okay, um, and um, 
The low season, which starts from 1st of May to 30th of June, and our high season starts from the 1st of July to the 30th of September, and then our shoulder season starts from the 1st of October to the 15th of November. Okay, and so our low season and the um, rate is $950 per patient per night. Uh, that's an amazing. And um, the high season, which starts from the 1st of July to the 31st of September, is uh, $1,350. And the shoulder is exactly the same with our low season rate. Okay. And um, our group rates varies from 850, um, 1,210, and 850 again. Okay. And then children sharing, that's between 12 to 15 is um, $400, that's a low season. And again, high season is $400 and shoulder season is $400. So we do not actually have any uh, uh, difference there. So it's pretty much the same uh, low, high and shoulder season. Okay, and then Amanzi, Rakritz. Amanzi, we've got four chalets there, uh, four tents. Um, the low season, again, it's exactly the same, uh, first of May. Uh, to the 30th of June and uh, the high season, 1st of July to the 30th of September and the shoulder season is 1st October to the 15th of November. Okay, uh, $750, um, that's our low season rate and our high season, season rate is 1150 and uh, the, shoulder the shoulder rate is 750. Okay, and the group rates for the low season rate is 675 for group rates and um, 1035 for the high season rate and 675 again for the shoulder. Okay, and um, like I said earlier on, not contribution of $100 per bed night will be added to all invoices, park fees and conservation levy, rates are inclusive of VAT and tourism levy. Okay, then um, the Kaila rates, um, per patient sharing, number of tents, four. Okay, the low, again, it's exactly the same, 1st of May to the 30th of June. Uh, high season, 1st July to the 30th of September. And shoulder, 1st October to the 31st. Okay, and uh, Kaila at 550 US dollars. And uh, the high season is $750. And the shoulder season is 550. And the group rate is 3,500. Okay, children, it's $250 all the way, low season, high season, and shoulder. Okay, Andrew. Charlie, uh, let's just quickly, very, very briefly touch on the fact that there's four tents at Amanzi, um, and there's four suites at Kaila, guys, and both, you can see there's $3,500 for eight people at Kaila is basically exclusive use and your rate of 5,400 at a Manzi. So you can really, for multi-generational families, grandparents, you know, mom, dad, kids, it's a fantastic offering, uh, friends traveling together, and you can pair Kaila and a Manzi quite well on an exclusive use basis. I just wanted to add that in. Thanks, Sully. Fantastic. Sorry, we the next, um, yeah. yeah, we Sorry, actually Sully, have- Sully, while you're there as well, running. Uh, just your, your child policy. I've got quite a few questions coming through on that. People are just wanting to know their ages. Okay, so the children um, traveling in a group, that they could be, sorry. Um, so children sharing is between 12 and 15. And the children below 12, uh, they could be with a, uh, in a group, we would, we would accept. Good. What are your child policies? So basically, are you saying that if um, if they were in a group traveling together, I mean, they're getting a private vehicle anyway, um, you know, you guys, it would be on a booking by booking basis. But what's your hard child policy, Solly, on, on your very, on your three camps? I mean, what is your, what is your, your, your terms and conditions say? No under 12s normally, or how do you want to? Um, go for it, sir. No, no, go, go, go. go. No, I'm um, so the the our, our hard child policy is that no children under twelve, um, and uh, but if so, basically we're relatively flexible on that policy, uh, depending on whether they are in a, a group. Because if they're in a group, we can offer um, you know Kaila on exclusive use or an a, a Munzi on exclusive use, 
or um, uh, Anabezi, we can maybe corral them into using the Mashika deck. Um, and so it's basically the, uh, we're we're open to children, but we're not open to having uh, them in basically in single in, in in a couple of children causing havoc around the yeah, camp and yeah. ruining ruining the experience for everyone else. We have a, a family unit at both Anabezi and Amanzi, so we are child friendly in that sense. We do expect children. Um, we are basically well. To be honest with you, if I'm being frank, we do treat it on a case by case basis. Great. Yeah. Does that I, mean, I think that's answered it. I think that's perfect. You know, I think I think that you know you've got to have some sort of pointer and some sort of basis um, as to how you're going to operate. But because they've got such diversity in their product guys, and because you know they've got two different decks at Anabezi, and because they are family suites, it is very flexible. And uh, from a reservations perspective, don't think about or we can't send families and younger children there, they will deal with it on a case by case basis, light bulb moment, always go through the reservations. If they can accommodate, they absolutely will. Um, should, we, should we carry on? Are you finished on this one, Solly? Or should we go yes, to the next slide? Yes, 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 we can go to the next slide. All right, so these are our 2021 specials, which are the best value in the Lower Zambezi National Park. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna walk you through them. Okay, so pay, stay deals with free flights and private vehicle um, and a guide. Okay, these are valid for 2021 only. Okay, um, so pay for two and a half and stay for three. Uh, you'll get your free flights from Lusaka, Jackie, um, and sorry, free return flights, Lusaka to Jackie. And if you're using the different routings, let's say you're coming from Livingston um, and then you're, going, you're coming into Jackie and then to Mfue. So you're using the different routing that we service. So we will give you a rebate of $350 a rebate uh, for a different road. Okay, and um, a private vehicle and a guide for the length of stay. Um, and uh, free flights are only applicable to Anabezi from 1st of July to the 30th of September. And um, that's $3,375 plus $3,000 park fees. And for children, it's $1,000 plus 300 pack fees. Okay. And then pay for three, stay four. It's exactly the same. Free return flights, Lusaka, to Jackie, and a 350 rebate for a different route. Still get your private vehicle and a guide for the length of stay. Free flights are only applicable to Anabezi. Um, from the 1st of July to the 30th of September. And that's the rate is 4,000. Is it, sorry, is it not for the entire season on your pay three, stay four? There's a difference there in your... Um, at, at, at different end. Yeah, so we've done the pay two, stay two and a half, stay three, where it's one July to be September. And then on your original document yesterday, sorry, you had uh, that the free flights were applicable for the entire season for the pay three, stay four. Is that right or not? That's right. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay. All right. Sorry, and, and then, then go, go through your rates, Sonny. Okay. And then the low and shoulder season rates, $2,850. And sorry, it's sorry. that. And um, uh, one thousand two hundred for the children and four hundred dollars. I just want to, I can I come in here sorry for a quick second and I know I'm interrupting you and I'm sorry if I'm breaking. No 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 that's fine Andrew. Uh, yeah. Just just from it just guys from an offering perspective I don't I mean I represent you know that African Focus represents a whole lot of Safari product and we're not and I, I talk to other reps and I talk to other people. I don't know of too many other places that are offering a paid two and a half day three where you're getting free flights from a major international airport where they are scheduled into their camp. They're offering basically a, a discount on, on a three night stay as it is. They're offering free flights, They're offering a private, a guaranteed private vehicle and, and uh, you know, kind of guide, um, which usually comes with a price tag of anything between in South African terms, 6,000 and 10,000 rand a night. 
for, for that um, private vehicle and guide. So you'll see on the Lion Camp combo, there's a charge for the Lion Camp section of the private vehicle and guide. But guys, I, I really, I don't know how to stress how affordable this epic big game, absolute paradise of a safari destination is for you guys um, to take use of. So no more excuses in the trade of, oh, but you know, Zambia is expensive. This is an unbelievable deal, $3,375 dollars um you know for a three night stay um where you've got your flights included you've got private vehicles i, I don't know where you can get a better deal than that anyway sorry over to you with the Zambezi experience thanks um, can i do the Zambezi experience yes, so yes. my my brain <laughs> <job. laughs> <laughs> no go for it I, no, you can do the line camera <laughs> so yeah. the the um just about the Zambezi experience um i we we we, we created this option because uh, you know, I spent a lot of time between Kaila and Anabezi and, and doing that trip from, you know, Kaila down to Anabezi by boat. Um, it was just one of my favorite things. And, you know, every time I took friends or, or, uh, or um, uh, family down on that trip, they were just kind of blown away about this opportunity to do like kind of a trance uh, Zambezi from one end to the other. And it's, it, it almost puts you in a little bit of a, a trance. It's just so peaceful and you go through meandering through the, the sandbanks and there's buffalo and, and, and elephant and, and the hippo running into the water. And so I just thought this idea of combining the two products and because they're so different, you can do the, um, a different set of things at Kaila. You can do the Kaila, um, uh, the, 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 the village visits, um, the walks up to the, the ruins, the camp out at the ruins. Um, you can have a slightly different bush feel. It's a bit, as I said, it feels a bit my, like South Luangwa. And then you jump into a, ve a, 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 a um, boat and you do a three hour trip down um, to Anabezi. And, you know, for the more adventurous option, you know, we pop you down, have maybe a little bit of lunch or brunch, and then you canoe the last bit into camp. Um, did it a couple of times, and I was like, this has just got to be one of the, you know, one of the great things you can do in this part of the world. So it was just something that, you know, was born out of my personal experience of like basically commuting between the two camps by boat and just loving it every time. Um, and so, you know, with that, just on prices, it's, you know, 3,885 plus 360 park fees. Children, we have a rate there, which is 971. So if you translate that into five nights, um, you know, my maths isn't that good, but it's really a good deal. So, you know, in, in the shoulder- uh, $750 a night per adult. Exactly. Which is for, no, for nothing. And, and the low season, it's even less than that. I think it yeah. comes to about 640. So it really is something that we put together that I think, you know, I, I just wanted to share with, um, with uh, the, you know, kind of people. And uh, I would really encourage you guys, if you're looking for, if your clients have five days and looking for good value and a range of experiences, it really is, it's, it's great. And you, you see, you know, it might not seem interesting, but you drive down and people see the other, you know, the other part, the uh, camps and where they are and just get a real feel for the, mm. the expanse of the conservation area that is the Lower Zambezi. Um, I can't recommend it enough, um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you look, Sean, you're right. I might be biased, but to be honest, this is actually a gem. This yeah. is absolutely amazing. Um, um, and, and then I'll, I'll just talk really quickly because I'm, I'm sure we, I see we've got some questions, but the Lower Zambezi with Lion Camp, um, it's a pay six, uh, stay eight. Mm. It's got, it's the two camps combined really, really well. Mm. We've set this up for the last two years. It's been incredibly popular. Mm. Um, I mean, if you think about it in the low season uh, and in the high season, if you're doing, if you're doing eight nights in the high season, August, mm. September mm. for 6,540 and they include park fees. That means that you're again getting it for, you know, eight nights in two top, top camps for less than uh, $850, about $850 per person per night. Um, and, uh, you know, you get a private guide and vehicle at uh, Anabezi Line Camp, they, they've charged it and you're still eligible for this $350 rebate. Um, I mean, as, as Andrew says, you know, we always get this 
you know, this feedback, oh, Zambia is expensive, low Zambezi is expensive yeah. from the yeah. trade. Like, I hope we've addressed this because yeah. really the value to me is astounding. And that combined with the unique experiences is just, is, is, is fantastic. So um, please yeah. come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So that, that brings us to the end of the hard presentation. I think let's, I mean, guys, we, we're running into almost an hour and a half, but let's address the questions. We'll be done by 11.30 to all of you guys who have stayed with us. Thanks very much. Let's address the questions. I see there's 11 or 12 there. Um, Rogan, go for it, mate. Cool. Yeah, I'd like to read the, out the questions so everybody can hear them, Sean. So yeah. Cecilia is asking, visiting your camps, is it better to start by Anabezi or Manzi and then to Kaila? And just if yes, why? And trying to save transport costs from into Lusaka and back, which combination do you suggest? So I think, in my personal opinion, Kaila to Anabezi is great. Yeah. A Kaila then Anabezi, just because you can do the trip down river by boat. Going up river, it's good, but it's not nearly as kind of enjoyable. Um, so in terms of that, you know, we can get you into Royal or pick you up from Royal, or if you're coming in, We'll fly you to Kaila and then um, get you down to Anabezi by boat. And then you come out with either ProFlight or us, um, ProFlight from Jeki or us um, uh, from Kulefu. So, also, 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 you want to you you finish with a bang, guys. I mean, yeah. you know, we, you know, in any, in any itinerary, when I say finish with a bang, you, you, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough how unbelievably amazing the game experience is and those winter thorn groves down there it's it's it is sublime uh so you've got a good a really good game experience at kaila you've got a beautiful escarpment view um you know close to the river so big big picturesque river so both are amazing but your game experience deep in the national park it, it's just sublime guys I, I can't i cannot tell you in a two-dimensional flat screen presentation how good this game experience is sean Sean's been very modest and humble in the beginning, and, he, and he's very, very proud of the fact that the game's come back. But it's come back from excellence to beyond excellence, actually. Um, you know, it really is it's comparable with any big game experience in the world, if not better than most. So you want to finish with a bang, in my opinion. I would definitely uh, go Kaila and uh, down to Annabelle. Perfect. Um, okay, I've got one from Kate saying, uh, with regards to your new airplane, will you do Livingston Lusaka or just private airstrips? So we will not fly to Livingston. Our plane uh, is, is an Islander. It's built for short hops, no more than an hour. So Livingston is just too far. It's too slow. It, it wouldn't be comfortable. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so we'll do uh, Lusaka. Lusaka into oh, the lower Zambezi uh, airstrips. Great. Um, another one coming through from Kate is just your family villa unit. How many kids can it take? We've already addressed the age. I'm not going to bring that up again. So it can take three max uh, and it's set up for two. Um, but if you have more kids, we can also in the Anabezi, we, we put uh, mattresses in the, in the uh, sleeping, in the sitting area. Um, we can accommodate more, but it's, it's again, it's a case by case. Um, yeah. Great. Um, people are loving the presentation. Zephni is just saying that it's a great presentation and can we send the whole presentation to, to the trade? I think it might be a bit big, but yeah. No, no, we'll, we'll get this one uploaded into the folder before we share. So we're going to share, guys, we're going to share a Dropbox folder with you that has all of the Anabezia Manzi and Kaila collateral images, video, and um, various presentations. Some shorter, but we'll get this one uploaded. Um, into that uh, folder for you before we send you through that email. So you'll have access to it. It will be called the uh, Owners Insights webinar presentation or something along those lines, all right? Cool. Um, just Kate again is just referring to the room number 12. Is it family correct? Yes, family sure if... room 12. Yeah. Great. Um, are any of the camps fenced? Uh, the camp, Anabez in the Manzi are not fenced. Uh, Kaila has a fence at the back um, to, uh, so just a section of it uh, to stop elephants and the animals coming into and uh, messing up the pool and pulling out the thatch. Um, but the front side isn't, you look out over onto the ridge, from the ridge over onto it. So uh, 
yeah, Kaila is to a degree. Okay, then one of the questions coming through is just when Amanzi and Anabezi are closed. Um, yes, they're closed from the 16th of November to, um, are we opening up in April this year? 15th of April. 15th of April, we are. Yeah, we're opening 15th of April, um, but usually we're not open for April this year. We've we're, we're looking to hopefully yeah. be a bit busy on the 15th. Yeah. We've got some, some good bookings, so. And, they, and just on your closure date this year, you've extended to the 5th of January, is that correct? Yeah, sorry, yes. that's, that's a good point. Um, just to speak to those guy, those people who are interested in regional trade, we have great SADC units, um, rates, um, which I'll, I won't talk through. I'll, um, uh, you can get them from either any of us. Mm -hmm. And um, they are, uh, and we're open until the 5th of January um, to kind of accommodate both local and regional trade and try and, and keep Okay. We'll send you guys the static the static rates um, as part of. I mean, there's a lot of international people that are you know international companies and people that are listening in or that are going to watch this, guys. You know, right now the only markets that are really open to us properly in Southern Africa are the static markets. And um, so we, most of the products that didn't have a static rate or, or very very sparingly used that have had to go full blown into a static you know promotion right now. So forgive us for that. But ultimately there will be. Um, there are static, uh, there will be a link to the satellites in that, uh, that e follow-up email we send you, right? Thanks. Any, Rogan? Yep. Okay, so um, just a general question asking from Kanandri, has the Manzi rates been reduced for 2021? Uh, no, they have not. Okay. Sharon's um, just asking for the Zambezi experience. Are there free return flights from Lusaka also in that package? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, the last question that I have here, Manuela, she's just asking, why would you combine Anabezi and Amanzi when they are in the same area rather than one of the one of these camps with Kaila? Um, so I wouldn't combine them. Maybe I, I didn't really communicate that uh, properly, but yeah, Anabezi and Amanzi, I would only visit one of them and I would combine either of them with Kaila. So um, yeah, uh, Manuel is. Yeah, but 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 you see, we've actually had some guests that have stayed at both camps. Yeah, I mean, and, and and because each camp has got like what John has said, each camp has got its own different feel. You know, so we have had guests that have stayed at both camps. So you can, if you want to. I suppose I suppose the odd person may want an extended stay in an area, not have to travel too far have two or three hour transfer between them. And um, ultimately, you know, that gives them opportunity. When I was guiding in the Sabi Sands, I won't mention the lodge that I was guiding at, but we'd have people stay at the next door lodge and brand, which is literally eight Ks down the river um, for three or four nights. And then they would come to us for three or four nights. So, and they wanted to just be in the same area, but experience two different camps. So they could do that, but hundred percent Manuela, mostly it would be combining Kaila, which is very different. Um, a lot of different activities up there as well, although some of the same, and then down to, to the, the other Amanzi or, or Anabezi. Just very briefly, guys, on the static rates, you know, we've, we, when we've been publishing these static rates for all of our products, some of operators have come back and said to us, but why can't, you norm, why can't you keep these as your normal rack rates for your normal business international when we come back? You know, why, why suddenly can you discount your rates by 60%? And why wouldn't this be affordable? Why can't you do this for the entire industry? Let me just stipulate very, 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 very clearly that the static rates are allowing this operation and these operations to cover some of their operational costs. Um, they are by no means making money. They are still making a loss, but it's better than making 100% loss month on month for the next three months if they can cover some of their costs. They need to charge their normal rack rates for their inbound business in order for the business to make money, in order for these community project developments and the conservation ethics and everything to go ahead. So please don't make a mistake in thinking that, you know, or that these products are going to make money out of the static rate. They're not. They're just going to cover some of the operational costs. But it is a great opportunity for some of the South African, Botswana, Namibian, Mozambique, and all of the static countries, uh, Malawian, you know, sort of nationals to take advantage of being able to get to some products that they might not be able to afford normally. So I hope I've explained that to you. Anyway, guys, without further ado, is there anything um, you want to finish with, Sean, Solly, or you guys done? Rogan, does anyone want to say anything, or can we finish off with this uh, webinar today? Just uh, one more coming through. Do you hand out rates to international operators? If so, are DMCs protected? 
Can I answer that? Yeah, sorry, I was about to say, I don't quite understand, but. Yeah, so 100% uh, DMCs are protected. I mean, that's why the likes of myself are involved with the product. Um, and and to be fair to to Sean and Solly and the Anabasia, Munzi and Kaila brand, they were fiercely, you know, kind of protective and fiercely loyal to, to their Southern African DMCs, not just the South African DMCs, but the Southern African DMCs. And we understand the supply channel. So, yes, I mean, you know, from time to time, there are international suppliers uh, called wholesalers that are possibly always booked Southern Africa direct. Zambia has been operational since, you know, in, in the tour, in the ecotourism sector since sort of the 1950s and was one of the first Southern African countries that went out to the world with their safari offering away from the hunting experience. So, you know, they've got some relationships and, and generic and, and kind of historical relationships in place. Um, when I say they, I'm talking about all Zambian camp and safari operators have got some relationships with source market suppliers that they've had for three or four decades, long before some of you know, the South African operators were around. Um, so there will always be historical relationships, but by and large, this, this particular brand, and, and you know, Anabezia, Manzi, and Kaila, have have protected the try to protect the DMC, um, you know, as as best as they can. So you know, yes, hundred percent. There will always be a protection for the supply channel. We understand the supply channel. We know that's relevance. And most of our business comes from it. So you can rest assured that you're protected. And if you if there's ever a case where you feel like you're not, you're welcome to raise it with me. Uh, I'll take it to Sean and Solly, and we'll deal with it on a case by case basis. But I really, really would be. I almost eat my non-existent cap if you came to me with an issue of non-protection uh, from an Anabezia, Manzi, and Kaila perspective. Any any more questions? Nope, that's everything. All right. Sean, Sally, any parting thank words? You. No, any just a thank you. Hope to see you guys soon at Anabezia, Manzi, and Kaila. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. I don't know. I don't know who's controlling the presentation now, but I'm going to end it, guys. For all of us, yeah. thank you very much for tuning in today. It's been a long one. Uh, thanks for those that stuck around for the entire presentation. You know, Zambia is a massively, massively undersold destination, guys, and I think it's the next hot-to-trot safari destination in Southern Africa. So thanks for sticking around. We look forward to welcoming your guests at Anabezia, Manzi, and Kaila, and thanks to Sean and Sally for the time that you've given us today. Uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Cheers, guys.